Happy Sunday, everybody. It is Sunday, May 24th, and it's time to dig into the eyes in my collection. When I mentioned I don't have very many eyes, I wasn't kidding. I have two. First up, the Canadian band, the Irish Rovers. This one, the Irish Rovers, live in Australia, uh, includes their somewhat known hit, The Unicorn, which was interestingly written by Shel Silverstein. This doesn't include their probably most famous song, Wasn't That a Party, but it was released a few years after this album came out, which is, would be why it wasn't included. It also doesn't include their traditional Christmas classic, Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer, which has got to be in my top 10 least favorite songs ever. Next up is Thing Spots. This one is sort of interesting timing, simply because I've started to listen to a podcast called The History of Rock Music in 500 Songs. It's by a guy named Andrew Hickey. It's an absolutely fascinating podcast. He's basically started in the 20s and 30s, and he's moving his way forward. Uh, by episode, he's around 95 or so right now. Uh, I'm slowly catching up, and I'm in the early part of the 30s. But the Ink Spots episode was 9 or 10 or so in his timeline. So... As a result, I went back and re-listened to the podcast. Uh, it also happens to be, just as an aside, what I'm listening to right now. So after re-listening, I'll admit, made a few notes to go over this stuff because it's a really fascinating history of the Ink Spots. So they were originally formed in the early part of the 30s. The name itself, Ink Spots, was not particularly loved by all the members in the band as it sounded too colored. The big moment in their history is in 1936 is when Bill Kenny joined the band. Kenny helped to form their Ink Spots sound. Now that sound itself consisted of an opening guitar riff of a very repetitive rhythm that they would repeat to different tones over several songs. After that introduction of the guitar riff, Kenny would come in singing in his higher tenor voice and he would go through the entire song. After that, the other member in the band, Jones, uh, Hoppy Jones, would come in in his low baritone and he would speak, sing the remainder of the song. Then they would come back in a third time and they would sing it all together. And that, that formula went over several songs for um, the Ink Spots. Most noticeably their hit, That's When Your Heartache Begins, which unfortunately is not on the fabulous Ink Spots album that I have. What's probably more interesting in the Ink Spots history is the name itself and how the band evolved and dissolved. What ended up happening is an awful lot of legal trouble in the 40s. Members left. Uh, one of the members passed away on stage. Another was uh, called into duty in the army. So as a result, in 44, the band itself dis was dissolved, but was considered a corporation and Bill Kenny had control of it. Now, in 55, after another lawsuit, what it was determined was that the band itself wasn't a corporation, it was a partnership. And as a result of being a partnership, basically anybody with any right to the name Ink Spots could actually call themselves the Ink Spots. As a result, there ended up being 30 or 40 different versions of the Ink Spots that would be touring at any different time. And it may not even include any of the key original four members. In fact, from listening to the podcast, one of the last concerts of the Ink Spots was in 2013 or so, and the last member that would have any claim to the name of the Ink Spots died in the early part of the 2000s. So even at this day, the band name Ink Spots is actually considered a public domain. So you and two, three, four of your friends could join a band, follow this formula, and call yourself the Ink Spots without any legal obligation. Uh, not considered official legal advice, by the way. So, uh, yeah, talk to your local lawyer on that one. So, yeah, Ink Spots, pretty interesting history. Uh, I would also recommend jumping in and giving that podcast a try. Again, it's called uh, The History of Rock Music and 500 Songs. Uh, totally interesting topics. Even if there's one a song itself, if you're not particularly interested in it, it's worth listening to the old episode, the original, the entire episode as Hickey's style will go around and reference other songs, other genres, and come back around to his main thesis of the artist itself. So that's it for today, Sunday, May 24th, with the letter I. Um, hopefully do better tomorrow with J's. I know I have a better assortment of J's. So we'll talk then.